By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I've got a really cool episode for you. This was recorded in my local game store and uh, in Hilversum, actually not in Amsterdam, in, uh, in the Vendetta. So shout out to the Vendetta. And I'm playing a mono green stompy budget list. This is really a budget friendly deck. And I'm taking on one of the most expensive decks in the format, one of the most powered decks in the format, the deck. Uh, against Yoop, my opponent today, and I mean his deck, damn, it is evil, people, and I'm going to try to win, simple as that, with my mono green budget deck, and what I hope to show with this video is, you know, you don't have to have a fat wallet to have fun in old school magic, and you know, I, I hopefully I can show that with this match. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip the, uh, skip the deck deck. Just go straight to the matches. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so click on there. It'll take you straight uh, to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to my Patreon page. So if you like the content that I make and if you want to support me as a content creator, please take a moment to visit patreon.com slash timmytalks. And there you can find out how you can become a supporter of the show. It already starts for just $1 a month. And for that support, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you can join in on the Timmy Talks online events. So if you're interested, take a look at uh, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, we're going to start with the deck decks. And I guess I'm gonna start with uh, my evil opponent. Let's take a look at his version of the deck. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop Vok. So this is the deck, right? This is uber control. And even for a the deck list, it's very controlling. I mean, check it out. No fireball, no Sarah Angels. Like he's really going for the traditional way. Control, control, control. And then somewhere they're tucked away, there is a play set of Mishra's Factories that's going to grant him the win. But this is like a really passive strategy, a style of playing the deck, right? You're going to sit back, you're going to counter away the threats, you're going to remove the threats with your white removal. You've got two abysses in the deck to take care of any non-artifact creature threats, which are going to be plenty in this matchup, by the way. I think the abyss is really going to be a pain for me. Um, and then, of course, he's playing with the Jam Day Tomes, the famous Jam Day Tomes, from that control position, you're slowly or slowly, but you're just going to draw one card at a time, get that card adventure engine going. You've got your recall, which is super good in a deck like this with all that power. You've got your, you know, your, your draw seven with your time twister to just get all the cards back into your library again, start the whole game all over again. I mean, this is going to be a really, really tough deck to beat. And you may think when you're looking at it, you know, he only has the factories to win, right? So if I take out the factories, you know, he cannot win. Well, actually, he can deck me, first of all, you know, although, you know, he's got the time twister, so he can choose how he wants to use it and when he wants to use it. But, I mean, most of all, he can protect his factories. He knows when to animate the factories, when not. He can get the factories back with the time twister and the recall. There are just a lot of ways. And when you're playing this deck, you, 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 should, you should realize the, the job you have, the role you have in the matchup, you're the control player, you're going to take it easy while you're going to watch your opponent, in this case me, with this green stompy deck, go all nuts. And you're just going to really strategically take out the important pawns, respond at the right moment, stabilize the board, and then you're going to start using your gem day tone, drawing a lot of cards. Now, when you're looking at this list, some people may say, you know, take out the disrupting scepter for even another gem day tome or maybe a fireball as a finisher. Um, but what I like about this deck is that he's chosen to play with the Disrupting Scepter. It's also kind of an homage to the original, the deck version, where the Disrupting Scepter played a pretty big role. I mean, nowadays, the Scepter, you don't see it that often anymore. But I think it's really cool that in Yoop's version, you know, he said, you know, I want to play it super control, no real creatures, you know. Um, and, of course, with the Disrupting Scepter. So I'm really liking that. Uh, but this is going to be tough, man. This is going to be tough. All I really want to do with my deck is just, you know, slam creatures down and try to attack and kill them before I go completely nuts. Because playing against a deck like this can be can be really, really tough for the simple reason that, you know, he wants to win through those Mishra's factories. So he doesn't care if that takes like an hour. You know, he knows he's going to get there. So, yeah, really curious to to find out how this uh, this match is going to end. I guess if this is a short video, I've probably won. If it's a long longer video, well, you know... 
there's a chance that my uh, my the deck opponent uh, beat me. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Yoop. Now let's take a look at my deck Mono Green Stumpy on a budget. And here we see my deck Mono Green Stompy, and it's actually green on a budget as well. I mean, I've tried to get as many white bordered card versions, the cheapest versions. There are also some like foreign uh, white bordered cards in here just for fun. You know, I just, I loved getting this deck together. For example, the Sylvan Library is a B Biblioteca, that's Spanish for library. Um, it's just, it's, it's funny. Like this is really a deck, it's single sleeved. I can take it everywhere. Of course, there are some expensive cards in here. I can already read that in the comments. Um, yes, Ice Storm is pretty expensive nowadays. And yes, Berserk is pretty expensive. I do play with like really like the Berserks. They've seen schoolyards. They've seen sidewalks. They've seen bathroom stalls. They've seen bar tables. Like these are Berserks with experience. And I think they should be part of this Stompy deck, right? I think Berserk should be a card that you can see that, that it's been alive, you know, that it's been used, that it's seen battle. Um, but yeah, I mean, l discussing the deck, by the way, what does the deck want to do? I'm, I'm pretty sure you know that already, but you just want to play out creatures starting at turn one, ending maybe at turn four with your top end being the Urnum uh, Gen, of course, the four or five uh, creature from Arabian Nights, uh, which is an incredible stats, right, for four mana. And um, basically, you also have Pendle Havens in there. They're quite important because there are so many one ones in the deck. Lunarware Elves, Scavenger Folks, and of course uh, the Script Sprites. Now an important part of the deck as well, and that's why there are four Ice Storms in here, is that tempo play, right? I want to play Lunarware Elves turn one. Turn two, I want to play maybe, I guess always when I have the ability. I wanted to say maybe sometimes you want to get more aggressive and just play creatures out, but I guess if you have the option, a turn two Ice Storm is probably the way to go because you're ramping up with your Lunarware Elves and then you're slowing your opponent down um, with your Ice Storm, and that's also the reason why I'm playing with N3 Crumbles and for Scavenger Folk, because you may think that's so much artifact hate, you know, why not replace the Scavenger Folk with something else, like for example Spitting Slug, which is also a great card in Imono Green. Um, but I just decided to go for Scavenger Folk, so I always have a way to get rid of Mox and of Power decks, or you know, to get, get rid of factories that could get in the way uh, of your attacks. So, I mean, there are so many good artifacts in old school that I just think it's so good to have so many answers and crumbling by the way a Mishra's factory that's maybe almost the best feeling in magic in the magic world like it's so efficient it feels so good your opponent doesn't get any life it's only one green it's like you can keep attacking it's like wonderful and obviously what I hope in this deck is that I get into a position where I can play the giant grove and that berserk because that's a way that I can of course deal tons of damage imagine attacking with the script sprites, making it a 2-3 with a Pendlehaven, put a Giant Grove on it, making it a 5-6, then cast that Berserk, dealing 10 damage basically out of nowhere, right? That's kind of the scenario that I'm hoping for. Obviously, the deck is a super good deck, but I'm hoping to, like, just to trample over, you know, just to go too fast that he doesn't have any time to think or start his scheming. Now, the big problem, of course, is that the deck has access to Black Lotus, to all the Moxin, and, you know, that power is really going to help him to go very fast. You know, I'm going fast because my spells are really cheap. He's going fast because he's got all the power cards, right? That's kind of the difference here. So what I need to try to do is if he has like that opening with a lot of Moxen, is try to destroy that artifact, those mana, as soon as possible with the crumbles, destroy the mana base uh, with the ice storms. And at the same time, try to get pressure on the board and deal some damage. You know, I think that's the only way... Of, of winning and it's actually not that special anymore if you win with mono green against the deck that's the weird thing like a lot of players have been doing it the latest trend is by splashing a little bit of black giving you access to demonic tutor mind twist and terror but i really wanted to show you this list because it's it's so budget friendly it's so easy to assemble and it's really a deck that can can win against a lot of decks you can take this to an old school tournament and actually have a lot of fun really really you can um, hopefully I'm going to have fun in this matchup or maybe I'm just going to cry at the end of the video because I mean playing against the deck could be quite tough but I'm going to try it for you guys this is my list if you have any comments about my list any tips any things you would change please let me know in the comments below and do keep in mind that this is a budget list so for example I'm not going to play a Mox Emerald in this list you know I want to keep it pretty budget friendly anyway uh, this is my deck we've looked at the deck of my opponent that means we are ready let's go to the game Game number one, here we go. So it's Mono Green Stompy on a budget. That's the deck that I'm playing with versus the deck that's being played by Yoop. 
Uh, perhaps you're wondering, why is there nail polish on my uh, fingernails? Well, I lost a bet. Let's just keep it at that. So I'm playing with some cool colors uh, on my fingernails. I kind of like it. I think it's funky. Anyway, look at this. I've got a really good turn one and turn two. So turn one, I had Lana Rells, Pendlehaven. Turn two, Mistress Factory playing out an Argovian Pixies and another Lana Rells. So this is quite good. So next turn, I can swing in. But now we see my opponent playing a Mox Pearl and a Mistress Factory. So I wonder what he's going to do. Tapping two here. There's a Felwer Stone. So he has that Felwer Stone to, uh, to animate the factory. There's a forest from my side of the board. So if I have a crumble here, that would be quite nice. I can just attack with everything and just see what he does. And if he animates the factory, I can crumble. But maybe I don't because I'm, I'm a little bit in the tank here. I think, you know, remember Mishra's factory still has summoning sickness. So I think I should definitely animate the factory here. And I also have that Pendle Haven. So I could just attack with everything. Let's see what I'm going to do. Look at that. Just attacking with two, though. Does that mean I've got an Urnum in hand, perhaps? That could be the reason. Urnum, of course, being four to cast. Look at that. I am uh, pumping it up. So I'm dealing four points of damage, putting him on 16. Now playing another Pendlehaven. Okay, so now I can still cast that Urnum. There we go, right? Exactly. Urnum Jin. It's really going well for me here. Four or five card from Arabian Nights. And now, of course, my opponent needs some creature removal, starting uh, with, I guess, that Urnum Jin. There's another Taiga. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping to... Oh, there's a balance. Oh, my God. Like, this is, of course, a risk when you're playing against the deck, that balance. But I feel I feel that my strategy is just drop the creatures, turn them sideways, and attack. I, I feel like I cannot keep that in the back of my mind with this deck, thinking, oh, maybe he's got that one-off balance. But this is really, really brutal. There's an Argovian Pixies. There's a Counterspell on the Pixies. It does give me an opening here to attack with the factory, so I can attack for two, I guess, exactly, put him on 14, but this is a big problem. I mean, this is going to be really tough to get back from this. Both of our hands are empty, by the way, but, I mean, he's got all those books. I'm not feeling confident at all. I guess I need maybe a Sylvan Library from the top. That would really save me. Okay, there we go, Sylvan from the top. I mean, I'm still on 20. I can use my life as a resource, restock my hand. Oh, oh, oh brutal. Finding Ancestral Recall here for my opponent. There's so much happening here. So early in the game. Another factory not ideal for me. What else? A Mox Jet. Two cards in hand now. Passing the turn. I mean, he's still on 14. He's really high up. Like, despite that super start that I had. I mean, that, that balance, it wrecked me. Looking at the top three cards. Looks like I'm going to draw all of them. So, taking eight points of damage here. Taking all three cards, so I'm kind of having my own Ancestral Recall moment here. Playing a Mistress Factory. And, okay, there's a Scavenger Folk, so that's pretty decent. I mean, the problem is I cannot attack here because that one Mistress Factory doesn't have Summoning Sickness, so he can tap, uh, you know, pump it up to a 3-3 three, three and make it a 4-4 four, four with the other Factory. So it's not good for me to attack. Let's see what my opponent can do playing an Island. I mean, I'm, I wonder if he wants to play out a book here, knowing that I've got the Scavenger Folk on board. Maybe he doesn't, and I'm really curious to see what I'm going to do next turn. Looks like he's going to tap three. What, what can he have for three? Like, I mean, four is the number I'm a little bit afraid of because that's the Abyss. He's going to tap two. Okay, there's a Mind Twist for one. Going to lose a forest. Okay, that's not too bad. So losing that forest, taking on my turn, looking at my top three cards again. I wonder if I'm going to take all three of them again, go full sin. And it would drop here to, to, uh, to four. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to drop to eight instead. I mean, Yoop, of course, does have a double factory, right? I got to think about that as well. Animating here, attacking with just the one factory. And it looks like he wants to block. So he's first going to animate. In response, I'm going to crumble. Now, does he have a counter spell? That's another question here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so he's going to animate, pump the other ones. He's got a 3-3 three, three to block, and I'm going to use my scavenger folk to get rid of it. And I'm going to pump, so I am going to deal damage here. So he's going to drop to 11. So, of course, 
The crumble is being played after animation before he declares blockers because I really want to push that damage coming through. Here we see the disrupting scepter, not a card I have to worry about at this stage of the game. And I mean, this was a great turn for me. I dealt three points of damage and killed both of his factories. Like this is pretty amazing. And I mean, he is on 11, attacking for four here. Ooh, do I have a pump spell? No, I don't. So second main playing as Crypt Sprites, the 1-1 one, one Flyer, I can pump with my Pendlehaven. So I've got six more damage on the board. And look at his life total. He's on seven. He's on a two-turn clock here. Am I going to beat the deck here? Game number one, Mono Green Stompy. Is it going to happen? And, okay, he's drawing the one card. Animating, swinging in. I wonder what that one is. Going to pump, obviously. Going to put him on one. Can I finish the job? No, I cannot. Just a forest passing the turn. And I mean, this is going to be tough. I don't know if there's anything in the deck of my opponent to, to save him. I mean, we do see an abyss. Nope, it's not enough. Winning here, game number one. I mean, I'm not there yet, but I'm feeling pumped. I am happy, you know. Killing my, uh, my opponent here. Game one, winning against uh, the deck. We are uh, going to... Uh, Dive into their side to our side into our sideboards. That's what I'm trying to say. And we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. And uh, it looks like I'm taking a mulligan here. Yup, of course, being on the play after I won that first game. And uh, that's good. That's a confidence boost. So I know it's possible. Going to six. It's got to be tough here. Starting with the cart less. And of course, I'm uh, I'm not on the play. Look at this. Yup, starting with the time walk turn one. That's pretty good. There's a city, no more ramp though, so that's kind of good news for me. Let's see what I can do in my turn one, starting with the Lana or else passing the turn. But uh, it feels bad, you know, already staring down at three, uh, three mana, and it's going to be four, of course. There's a basic planes. Can he do anything? No, he cannot. Okay, that's a little bit of a silver lining here. It's not dropping a gem de tome, for example. And I'm going to find a factory here. Do I have an ice storm? I do, okay. Going here for the Taiga, that makes sense because City of Brass, of course, hurts my opponent and it's exactly uh, what I want to happen. So a little bit in the tank here. Oh, this is really a great response by you. Power sinking for one. He doesn't even have to take any City of Brass damage and he doesn't lose a land. This is ideal. And he didn't take any damage because I had to tap out to play the Ice Storm. And that's, that's kind of tough. You know, you, somewhere you feel like maybe I should have just attacked here uh, for three, you know, animating the factory. But... Yeah, I felt like I have to try to kind of attack his mana base. It's part of the strategy, but um, it's, it's tough against these powered decks. Taking on a turn number three for me. There's a factory. At least that's a card that cannot be countered, which is nice. So I'm going to, am I going to animate here? I feel I have to, but it's a risk. Like I'm expecting here a disenchant or a swords. But of, of course, after the pump. Oh, look at this. He's just taken the damage. Like This is kind of an unexpected uh, turn for me. Four points of damage. My opponent dropping to 16. And maybe, just maybe, his hand is full of like counter magic and answers. Well, counter magic and lands, I, I mean. Because if he had answers like Disenchant and Swords, he would have played them already. So this is a pretty good moment for me. There's a City of Brass. Let's see what he's going to do. He's going to tap two. And he's going to play a balance. I, yeah, that's... I mean, it could be worse. I'm only losing a lot of else. I mean, the balance in uh, game one was much worse. Remember, I also have to discard two cards. So that's kind of tough. Looks like I'm going to discard two forests. No changing my mind, though. Looking at my hand again. Okay, discarding a Forest and a Storm Seeker. Okay, Storm Seeker coming in from the sideboard. One green and three to cast. And it's an interrupt. And it deals an amount of damage equal to the, uh, to the cards in the hand of the opponent. So it works really well against uh, decks like the deck. But as you can see, the, the hand of my opponent is pretty empty already. That's probably why I chose to go for the, uh, for the Forest. So I would have enough mana to, uh, to play a creature and... Uh, Animate my factory. There's a counter spell, by the way, here on the uh, Lana or else. I am able to attack with my factory and pump it. So, you here dropping to 12. It's looking kind of okay, actually. Also, because he has a City of Brass, right? Let's imagine he's got a book in hand, a Gem Tome. Are you going to play it out? That means you've got an artifact on board that's quite slow, and you take a damage, you go to 11. 
There we see me animating it. Again, not animating both of my uh, factories. Oh, I am actually attacking you for four. Mm, this is unfortunate. Swords to plowshares. I guess I'm lucky that uh, he didn't play it sooner. He still takes two damage though. There's a Library of Alexandria. He's going to take a damage tapping out. There's a Brain Geyser. So he's on nine. I mean, he's pretty low. There we see uh, a Black Lotus here. I mean, all I can do really is just attack and hope that he doesn't have a disenchant. And I mean, if he de if he does, at least he's got to sack the Black Lotus for it. Looks like I want to play something, but I can see my opponent tapping down the Lotus, so changing my mind. There's a disenchant here. And I think Yup was a little bit too hasty here. If it would have waited just a sec, I think I just wanted to play a, a Giant Grove here. Trying to deal five points of damage, but it's, it's going pretty bad with me, to be honest. Like... I'm happy Yoop's on 9, but I need to find threats, I need to put them on the board, and I'm not doing that at the moment. Also a pass by Yoop, I mean I'm lucky that he's giving me this much time. There's another factory, okay, so... Hopefully I can swing in with it. Tapping a white, what are we gonna see? There's a soul ring. Tapping 2 from the soul ring, okay, tapping 4, are we gonna see a book? Yep, there's a jam day tome, we haven't seen a lot of jam day tomes. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to animate an attack. Oh, that's unfortunate. Another Swords to Plowshare. Second Swords to Plowshares of the game. This is really unfortunate because I need to put pressure on, especially with that book, right? Looks like here I still want to do something in my turn playing that uh, crumble here on the book. I understand that I'm playing it on the book also because he has that Library of Alexandria. But the problem here is, I mean, look at his life total. It's gone up four points. He's going up to 13. That's not the, the direction I want this game to go. And I do find a strip mine, which is not too bad. Perhaps I should have kept the strip mine in hand, by the way, kind of wait until you would go up to seven to try to use his Loa and then strip it at the right time. But I'm choosing a different strategy. Three cards now in hand. And I need a threat. There's a forest basic. Now remember, there's also an abyss, of course, now uh, in the game. That means I need to play out at least two creatures because I'm going to lose a creature during my upkeep to the Abyss. So that's pretty tough. Okay, there we see a Strip Mine taking care of the Loa. And I mean, I really wonder what's in my hand. I, I, I feel like one of the cards is definitely a Giant Grove. Here we see you, by the way, uh, just dumping his hand after I uh, destroyed the Library of Alexandria with the Strip Mine. I just keep passing turns here. There's the attack for two. Going to drop to 22, it seems, or do I have some removal? I do. Okay, there's a crumble. There's a counter spell, though. That's unfortunate. It does mean he's going to take a damage from City of Brass, so it's not too bad. But, I mean, look at his life total. He's on the 11. It's really high up. It looks like I'm going to do something. Tapping four. Okay, there's an Urnum. And, of course, also another creature, the Argovian Pixies. Now I just got to keep my fingers crossed to hope... That both of these creatures are going to survive until my next upkeep. Because then I have to sack one of the two creatures to the Abyss. There's another factory. Ah, this is too bad. This is really bad. That's uh, Sword Supplies number three. Uh, the pixie should be removed, by the way. So I'm making a mistake here. Don't think it's too relevant. Although, of course, if you place a Time Twister, it could become relevant. But, um, yeah, this is really bad. There's the attack for four. Yeah, now, uh, now the tables are turning. And I've got a lot of cards in hand. I, I, to be honest, I just think I've got a lot of Giant Groves or maybe Giant Grove and Berserk or something. What else could it be? You know, like most of the things I want to play out or perhaps one creature because of the Abyss, I cannot play it out, right? Remember, I got to wait for multiple creatures. And uh, it's pretty tough because it's it, if he counters away like the second creature I'm playing out, I've got a problem. So again, attacking for four here. It's looking really bad for me, to be honest. I'm on 10. I'm only drawing lands. I guess one of my outs could be another land playing a huge hurricane to make it into a draw. That could be something. Another attack on a drop to six. Drawing from the top. What can I find? Looks like I want to play out Alana. We're changing my mind though. I mean, at a certain point, it will have to play out Alana. We're just to, just to block the incoming factory. Attacking again for four. Going to put me on two. I feel like I should have played out that Alana uh, Elves, to be honest. You know, and yes, then I would have chump blocked, but I would have still be on six, right? Because probably it would have attacked with only one um, 
One factory. Oh, this is cool. Tsunami from the sideboard. Too bad, though. There's a counterspell. That is unfortunate. There's a Llanowar Elves passing the turn. So, again, having that Llanowar 2 block 1. It's not going to be enough, though, because he can attack with 2. Looks like he wants to do something else first. Going to tap 4. Oh, there's a Control Magic from the sideboard. I didn't have a picture of his sideboard, by the way, unfortunately. Oh, look at this. Losing it. Oh, look at that hand. Look at that hand. This is so frustrating. Two giant groves and a berserk. So all I really needed was one creature to push through, right? Even if it would have been just a 1-1 one, one script sprites, could have made it into a 2-3 with the Pendlehaven. And then I could have played like double giant grove and a berserk, right? I could have dealt 16 points of damage, but... It's so hard, like there's so much control against the deck, you know, he's had so many answers. Counter magic, swords to plowshares, you know, it's it's super tough. The Abyss, ah oh, man. Anyway, the silver lining of all of this is that we are going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. The good news for me is I'm on the play. That is really good news. Not taking a mulligan here, it seems. Okay, starting with the script sprites, 1-1 one, one flyer. There's a Library of Alexandria against me. That is not great. Look at that. Picking up extra cards. Swinging in for one. Tapping two green second main. Our Govian Pixies passing the turn. But, oh man. You know what it is? You need some luck. I mean, he hasn't won yet. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like with the, the Loa, he's going to pick up his answers. There's a City of Brass. Tapping it. Taking a damage. Look at this, right? Already finding those answers. That's the first sorts of the game. And that's a problem, right, for me. Like, this is just super annoying. So, playing a forest, attacking for one. Going to put him on 17. Another threat on the table. Scavenger Folk, not, not any more creatures, though. That's, that's not great. I kind of feel this pressure playing against the deck. It's almost like you're playing against a combo deck. Because you know if, you're, if you wait too long and you're, you're, like, you're like sucked into the game, he's got like full control. That's what you saw in game two as well. Like, for the life of me... I wasn't able to really push through any more damage at a certain point. We're not at that stage yet. So let's just hope that uh, I can fight, fight my way through the, uh, the Library of Alexandria. Putting him here on 15. Also playing a Llanowar Elves. Looks like I have only have two more cards in hand though. It's not great. Just going to draw another card. Oh, look at this. Oh my, man. Mox Jet, Underground Sea. What else are we going to see? I guess you want to draw a card if you want to play anything else out. I mean, he does have a beautiful, beautiful deck. I mean, all the black bordered good stuff. Crazy. Passing to turn, untapping, upkeep, draw. Attacking here for three. Going to put him on 12. Or not. Yeah, going to put him on 12. For a moment there, I thought he was going to play some more removal. There's a lot of elves. I mean, I know that if he's got one single balance, I'm like out. But I got to take the risk, right? Okay, this counter spell, I'm actually happy with it because it shows to me that he doesn't have any, uh, any balance in hand. I do see another sword there in hand, right? It kind of peeked through. Going to play a card. Passing the turn. So I can swing in now for another three, put him on nine. The thing is, like, it would have been so nice to have a Pendle Haven, like, early in the game. That's something that I had in game one. You know, I keep talking about game one because then everything worked. Anyway, there's the Swords. Going to lose another creature here. And also, one point of damage less here for, for Yoop's going to drop to ten. I do feel like I'm doing a, a pretty good job here, you know, playing against this active Loa. I mean, if I have this life. What I'm kind of missing, though, is that... That giant grove berserk moment. There's the pass. I mean, his hand is full right now. I mean, I wonder if I can even manage to like play another creature. There's Pendlehaven, so that's good news. If he has like a sword, he's gonna wait for the Pendlehaven. So I'm gonna pump up the Lana or Elves. So there's gonna be a two three. He's gonna take the damage. Okay, I'm, I feel pretty good about this. I didn't expect this to happen. I thought maybe we would see a sword after the Pendlehaven activation. Of course, he has already played out two swords to plowshares. He's now on seven. Two cards in my hand. Passing the turn. There's a city. I wonder what those two cards are. I'm afraid that they're just two lands. I hope not. But I fear it. 
maybe a tranquility if I boarded that in after seeing the um, uh, the abyss there in game two. And I think also after this whole thing with the abyss, perhaps I should play um, that enchant world from green, a uh, concordant crossroads in the sideboard. Anyway, attacking him for two. Again, pumping up, trying to deal four points of damage. And oh, look at this, playing a giant growth on the other one. And I'm really kind of waiting for my opponent to respond. So maybe I have another card in hand, a Berserk, for example. There's a counter spell, though, on the giant growth. Okay, could have been worse. Gonna get a card. So this giant growth is now countered. And that means I've got three damage. He would drop to four. It looks like I'm kind of calculating, is there a way for me to try to kill him here? Perhaps I've got a Berserk in hand and I'm considering Berserking the Lanawer. That would mean he would take two more points of damage, but he's not dead. That's a big problem. Do you really want to do that? I mean, I only have two creatures. There's tapping a green. I am going to play the Berserk, though. So I am going to deal four points of damage, it seems. Or does he have another counter spell or perhaps another Swords? Ooh, another counter spell, though. That is unfortunate. He is going to take another damage. I mean, that is the good news. It's going to go to three. I mean, I'm not even that unhappy with this counter spell because, or else he would have been on two. Now he's on, now he's on three. The problem is, how am I going to push through that final point of damage? I mean, he's on three. If he, if he doesn't do anything, which I don't expect him, but if he doesn't, the, the miracle could happen that he just doesn't have anything. I could kill him next turn. Tapping a white, though. What is he going to do? There's a swords. So it looks like he found a swords. Going to gain another point. I do need to remove these cards, by the way. They should be uh, with the uh, scavenger folk in the Argovian Pixies. Oh, look at this. Now, this is actually relevant. A hurricane. Oh, <laughs> I had a hurricane. I had a hurricane in my hand. I was so close to the victory. And look at this, I'm making a mistake here that you see that because he played the Swords to Plowshares on that on that script sprites. So that should have gone there with the other uh, removed creatures. But oh, I was so close to winning. Oh man, I had a hurricane in hand. I was probably waiting like for for the right moment, trying to get out of all of the counter spells out of his hand before wanting to cast that hurricane. And I am making a mistake here. The script sprite should uh, be on the removed pile, so. I'm sorry for that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, he is giving me a full new hand. I'm actually feeling kind of confident here. I mean, he's on three. I've got a full grip of cards. I'm probably just going to play out creatures like crazy next turn. That's what I expect. And I think this is really tough here for the, the deck players, really under pressure. Seven cards in hand is going to draw card number eight. I do see an Ancestral Recall in hand there as well. But I mean, who cares, you know? Remember, the two City of Brasses are also going to hurt him. So he doesn't really want to use them. He's on three. This is really a pickle for him. Okay, there's a blocker. That's good news, I guess. The Mishra's Factory. And then also playing the Ancestral Recall after uh, dropping the Sapphire. Finding another mock so he doesn't have to discard. There's a demonic tutor. Mm, man, that is, I'm not happy with this tutor. I was pretty optimistic until this point, you know, because I'm like, maybe the factory, I probably have, you know, a crumble in hand or whatever. Um, so I can handle it and I could just still swing in with the Lanawer and, and potentially kill him if it would have like a giant growth or something. But this demonic tutor is not making me happy at all. This is a concern. I mean, he's probably going to look up time walk, I assume. No, he's not. He's passing the turn. Okay, that's that's a silver lining. Got to untap my Lanawer elves, by the way. But I expected him to look up the time walk and just take another turn. Also being able to to then draw another extra card with the Loa. 
But uh, he didn't, so let's see. I'm just really curious. Looks like I'm kind of organizing my hand here, trying to figure out what I want to play out, when I want to play it out. I mean, I've got eight cards in hand. I mean, if you look at my deck list, there should be tons of creatures in there. Strip mining here to factory, right? So I'm really going for that aggression, meaning I probably don't have a crumble in hand. Attacking here. Not quite sure why I divided my hand, by the way, but probably going through my options. Tapping a white. Ah, that's unfortunate. There's a swords to plowshares. I mean, I guess you can expect that swords to be there, but it's just unfortunate. Gonna tap another green. Okay, there's the script sprites. There's another Lanor elves. Do I have some more pressure to put on here? Nope, that's it. I mean, I'm not really that impressed with my turn. I was really hoping for like some more creatures. I mean, I'm playing out two and I guess the strip mine was good. Another option for me, of course, would have been to go for the, for the library of Alexandria here. But I hope that you understand is that I'm just going to go for potential blockers. I know how important the Mishra's factories are in this deck. And um, yeah, I just really hope to push through and hoping that, you know, with the lower, he just finds maybe a jam day tome to draw even more cards. Like, that's not my, my real concern. I know he's got the, uh, the advantage there. The, for me, I'm really just staring down at that life total, three life. How can I get it to zero? I mean, I'm on 26 here. There's a balance. Oh, man. This is just crazy. I've seen balance in every single game. Give me a break. Oh, man. That's just bad here. Losing both of my creatures. I wonder if I have any creatures left in hand, right? I mean, so frustrating here. Again, that balance. And of course, Jupier is going to dump his uh, City of Brasses. I mean, now he's not going to use them anyway, you know, right? He's on three. Oh, this is so annoying. So it looks like he's going to pass the turn. Or not. Am I too hasty? Ye yes, no. I'm, re I'm reorganizing my lands, but that doesn't mean that he passed the turn. Looks like he's still in the tank. Yep, he is passing the turn, okay. Let's see if I can do anything back. I feel like I kind of need a Sylvan here at least. Looks like I've got an Ice Storm in hand, so I could Ice Storm the Loa, I guess. But that's not what I want to do. I just want to deal the last three points of damage. Yep, there's the Ice Storm. I mean, the Loa did, a, did its work, you know. It's been there since turn one, I believe. Okay, there's an Argovian Pixies counterspell. Oh, man. And I mean, this is good magic from, from Yoop, right? He could have counterspelled the Ice Storm. But knowing that he has to focus here on the creatures, he's got to think of trying to stay alive. So I think that was a really good decision by Yoop here. I mean, he's had enough lands. Maybe he's got a Gem de Tome in hand as well. Exactly, he does. So he can just, you know, get more cards through that Gem de Tome. He doesn't really need the Loa anymore. And I guess, you know, I was trying to also to lure out a potential counter spell. First do the Ice Storm on the Loa, if he allows that to happen. Play your creature. If he counters it, still play your creature. There's an Argovian Pixies passing your turn. You can kind of see on my, the way I drop the cards on the, on, on the play, man. I'm like a little bit frustrated. Because, I mean, I'm on, I'm, I'm on 26. He's on 3. I feel like, I feel like I'm, and then still I feel like I'm losing. You know what I mean? Because he's got control. Oh, talking about control, control magic. Oh, man, that control magic from the sideboard. I mean, you would think it's too slow, right, for four, but it's, it's, just, it's just so good. And this is the same scenario as in game two where I feel like I'm just so close, you know, I just need one more good hit and you're dead. But this is what the deck does, you know, it stabilizes and there's just no way, there's just no way through anymore. And now he's starting to attack me. And yes, I'm really high up in life, but who cares? He's got control. He's going he's gonna to hammer me down. 
I mean, I've got a couple of outs, I know that, but it's going to be tough. Okay, there's a copy artifact on the gem de tome. So he's just going to draw tons of cards with his two tomes. And now I've got to pass probably, right? That's, that's, that's horrible. Look at this. Oh, man. This is just so painful, right? He's drawing two cards like a mini ancestral recall. And I'm doing absolutely nothing. I'm just passing to turn collecting forests on my side of the board. Oh, God. He's going to swing in for four probably. Exactly. So I wonder if I have crumble. I don't even have a crumble here. So going to drop to 20. I mean, at least I've got nice, cool, big dice, right? That's something. And I have to say, I really have to say, I'm really enjoying playing with this mono green stompy deck. You know, it's not as linear as you may think. Like there are a lot of moments where you have to decide what to do. Are you going to swing in? Are you going to play the ice storm? When are you going to play your giant groves? Uh, you know, think about what your opponent may have. When are you going to animate your factories, etc.? Um, how are you going to block? Are you going to, you know, just lose a creature in attacking or not? You know, it's, 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 it's really an interesting, an interesting deck to play with. So I was just looking at the uh, counter spells probably here in, uh, in Yoop's deck. And that's also a nice way to bluff, by the way. Even if you have nothing, just kind of go through his library, you know, make him feel nervous. A uh, graveyard, I mean. Just go like, oh, how many, what if you played out yet? Oh, interesting. <laughs> you know, they start to overthink things. Sometimes that kind of slows them down. But I think, I think in this case, I mean, Yoops has full control. And every turn that I do nothing in past turn is great for him because it means at least four more damage and two more cards with those tomes. So he's not even attacking here. I'm a little bit surprised that he's not attacking. I guess it's because, oh, of course, because of the scavenger folk. But he could have attacked with the, uh, with the factory pump it up. Because I think my scavenger folk still had summoning sickness, right? But maybe I'm mistaken, though. That could be the case as well. It looks like I'm really in the tank here. So I, I think maybe one of those cards in my hand is a hurricane, perhaps. But I think if it's a hurricane, I should just take the risk. I should just take the risk. You know, if he has the counterspell, he's got the counterspell. The longer I wait, the bigger the chances that he does have a counterspell because he's drawing two cards a turn. Or may, I mean, maybe my hand's just like three, three lands and I'm bluffing. That's also a possibility. Look at this, another jam day tome. Uh, it's just going, uh, it's going from bad to worse here for me. I mean, if I have a crumble in hand, I could consider just attacking with the scavenger folk. Although I would need like two crumbles. Playing another forest. Passing the turn. Oh man, this is, this is not cool. So close. And that's also, I guess, kind of what I meant with playing against the combo deck. Because with the combo deck, you usually also have the moments where you come so close. Like I'm one lightning bolt away from victory. But it feels, it feels so far away. It's like we're in different continents, you know. It's like really tough. He's got a time walk there in hand as well. Part, like part of me is hoping that he's just gonna like kill exactly kill my my scavenger folk i guess i'm gonna destroy a book why not exactly gonna destroy a book here oh well that's it right he's gonna swing in for six i i kind of hope you're gonna swing in for six you that you're not gonna let me dangle I mean, I I guess my outs are Stormseeker if I still have it. Okay, taking a time walk here. Time walk turns to Stormseeker if I still have it in there. Maybe I boarded it out after game two, but I probably didn't. So Stormseeker and um, Hurricane. And maybe I boarded an extra Hurricane, uh, which is possible. So then I've got two Hurricanes and Stormseeker as outs, which is not too bad, you know. It's three cards. But remember, because of the time twister earlier, I mean, the deck's pretty thinned out. And uh, here, we, by the way, see you playing a recall. Which is horrible, because it means it's going to take back the best controlling cards to counter spells, probably from his graveyard. Exactly. Oh, no, he's not. Okay, that's funny. 
I, I, I do like this. I do like it. It's going to go for Time Twister Time Walk, which is super cool, right? Because you have like and a fresh hand and you get another turn. Oh, he's not. Okay, I thought he was maybe going because he had enough mana. He could have cracked the Lotus. Oh, now he's going to take his extra turn. I thought he already took the extra turn. Oh, man. I am I am, I am losing this so bad. Like, it is nice to see this master class of control from the deck. And uh, there we see another attack for six. So I'm going to drop to eight. If, if I was Yoop, I would be tempted to play the Time Twister. Not because it's a good move, but just to kind of... You know, show your power You're in such a flow. Remember, he's going to get another turn after this one. This is just insane. Oh, man. Just absolutely insane. I don't know. Don't know what to do. Like, this is turn three in a row <laughs> for my opponents. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is so painful. Oh, man. And the thing is here, because he's on three, I keep playing, right? Because I know, well, I, I always want to finish a game. I hardly ever concede, by the way. But, uh, you know, I know I've got a few, like, half outs that are probably going to be countered away. But I just still want to try tr uh, want to try to win. There's another forest. There's a swords, though. Oh, going to gain two from the sword. It's going to go up to four. doesn't matter. I'm going to die. I really wonder what those two cards are. Oh, a giant growth in hand in a forest. So I didn't have a hurricane. Okay, I guess I could have played the giant. That's what I'm doing. I'm playing the giant growth now on the uh, scavenger folk that got the sword. So at least I go up to seven, buying me one more turn. Nope, because he found the other factory so he can swing in for exactly seven. So he's not even giving me that one turn. And look at that. And he's showing me all the counter magic he had in hand to kind of show me like, don't worry, that one turn wouldn't have saved you, even if you would have top decked the Hurricane or or the, um, the Storm Seek or whatever. But ah, people, people so close. But I'm, I, you know, to be honest, I'm proud of my deck. I'm proud of the green Stompy deck. I think it did really well. I mean, I, I almost beat the deck. I mean, that's something. And this is like a super budget friendly thing. So... Again, you know, if you feel about starting old school, these are great decks to start with. Lots of lots of reprints, and uh, it's really affordable and fun. I find it fun to play, but of course, that's a very personal personal thing. You know, I cannot tell you this is fun to play because that depends on what kind of player you are. But anyway, I've really enjoyed playing with this deck, and uh, here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Yoop, man, you play this deck scary, scary good. I'm, I'm a little bit worried. I actually asked Yoop to... Uh, to make the deck like his version of the deck um, because I just wanted to try out this matchup and I'm a little bit scared now you know I hope you're gonna dissemble this deck that I don't have to play against it uh, again because man it is really tough anyway thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks the channel where we talk old school magic before you go please take a moment to like share and comment on this video all this helps the channel move forward so thank you very much for doing that and if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, thank you. Now that that's out of the way, one last thing I want to share with you. That is the Timmy Talks Patreon page that I talked about at the intro of this video as well. Check it out, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and find out how you can support me as a content creator. So if you like what I do, please consider becoming a supporter of the show. And if you become a supporter of the show, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Peters think it is Samba Kazi? 